Hey friend, and welcome to the Angie McPherson Show, your go-to talk show style podcast for all things business and marketing, where we mix fun, entertainment, and inspiration to help you craft your dream business and life. I'm Angie McPherson, an industry-leading branding photographer, marketing strategist, and ultimate hype woman for entrepreneurs, here to share a decade's worth of knowledge and experience. So listen in for unfiltered stories, interviews with ambitious entrepreneurs just like you, and discussions on marketing, productivity, resilience, and more. Get ready for tips, laughter, and often a playful game to fuel your entrepreneurial journey. Let's dive into the episode. Hello, and thank you for tuning in. Do I have a story for you? (laughs) So let me take you back to 2010. Uh, My husband and I went to LA. I love California. Oh my goodness. We love LA. We went there just for a fun getaway. We went to the beaches. We toured Hollywood Homes visited movie sets, a typical touristy LA thing. Another thing that we did, typical touristy thing, was um, we went to a game show. I love game shows and I literally apply for game shows in my spare time. It's just one of the fun things that I like to do. (laughs) So since we were going there, I was like, let's go on a game show. So the show that we decided to attend was Let's Make a Deal. And this is hosted by Wayne Brady. Love him. We were huge fans of the show and we really just set aside an entire day day for this show. So if you're not familiar with the show, let me just break it down for you. So Wayne goes through and selects from hundreds of people. He selects a few people from the audience to pick a door. And behind the door, there could be a really fun, awesome prize, or it could be a donkey, which means you get nothing. Also, the audience comes in costume. It's super, super fun to watch. So before we even left for our trip, I focused on picking the perfect costume that reflected my personality. If you know me, you know I'm a jokester. I love to laugh, have a good time. So I picked a jester costume (laughs) because I'm definitely a jokester. So while most people prepare for the show by simply just choosing their costume and that's it, I took it a step further. I said, let me do my research and Google the best practices to get picked on the show. I went to Google. I went to forums. I went anywhere and everywhere I could to find best practices on getting picked. And if you watch the show, you can probably assume that Wayne is picking people from the audience at random. But when I did my research, I found that it is not at random. (laughs) There was actually a vetting process on site and not many people knew that coming into it. So let me take it to the day. The day was so long. I think we got there like at seven or eight o'clock in the morning and there were over 300 people in the audience for our show. And they interviewed every single one (laughs) before we got onto the actual set. They interviewed over 300 people. That's how you know that this was a long day. So let's paint the picture of the interviews here. So Have you seen the Netflix show called Squid Games where they take over like 400 people and they give a single prize to the person at the end, but along the way they go from room to room, they play games, have challenges, and you know, people get eliminated along the way. This is literally how the interview process felt (laughs) to get on Let's Make a Deal. And I turned it on. I mean, I smiled at everyone uh, from audience members to producers to casting agents, even the craft services crew, I was friends with everyone. (laughs) And when it came to the interviews, they really wanted to know about our backstory. So they asked, where are you from? You know, what do you love about the show? How long have you and your partner been together? You know, I came with Sean, who was my boyfriend at the time. We weren't even engaged. So they were asking about our backstory together. They asked what I like to do on the weekends. How was my time in LA? They asked, why do you want to be chosen? They asked, what would I do with the prizes? And I didn't even have to think because I did my research. I knew the questions that were coming in and I had the answers planned in my head. (laughs) I felt so sneaky because so many people seemed caught off guard. I mean, they thought from looking at the show, you just go there and you're picked at random and you play. They didn't know that we would be grilled (laughs) for hours before we went in there. But you know who knew? I knew. (laughs) I did my research and I had a plan to get picked. So what made it even more exciting was that they filmed all of our interviews and they showed them to Wayne Brady, probably picked the best ones. And Wayne actually had the final say on who would make it to the stage. So 
We took our seats. The music begins to play. Wayne comes out. The cameras are on. And he looks around the audience to choose someone. And we're all shouting, pick me, pick me, Wayne, over here, over here. And I just remember, I'm having like chills thinking about it. I just remember locking eyes with Wayne Brady. And he pointed at me and he said, you, girl in the jester costume, come on down. (laughs) I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) I'm like freaking out. I ran so fast over to him, almost tripped over myself. So then he gave me and another contestant $500 a piece, literally put $500 cash into my hand. And he said that we could bid for what was behind certain doors. So I chose door number one and I bid for it. And it was a create a vacation prize. So basically a $2,000 gift card to a bed and breakfast, $2,000 gift card to American Airlines. And then he gave me a chance to bid again for another door. So I bid on door number three and I won $3,000 worth of furniture to Crate and Barrel. I was shook, (laughs) shook, shook, shook. Um, And then we thought the game was over and Wayne said, I have one final opportunity for you. He said, you can keep your winnings or trade it all for what was behind door number two, the door that you did not choose. And I was like, oh gosh, what do I do? So I decided to play it safe. I couldn't believe that I had made it that far in the first place. So I told him, Wayne, I'm going to keep my winnings. Thanks for letting me play. And the other contestant actually did the same. I remember looking over to my husband, Sean, and he was smiling and he was putting his thumbs up. So I was like, okay, we're good. (laughs) I made a good choice. And then Wayne was like, well, let me just show you what was behind the door that you didn't choose. And it was a brand new car, (laughs) a $14,000 car. And I did not go for it because I said, you know what? I've already won behind door number one door number three, I feel like there's going to be a donkey behind this door. And it was a brand new car. And all I could think was like, oh my goodness, why didn't I take the risk? You know, it's not like I truly would have lost anything. I came here empty handed. And then I thought, okay, wait a minute. My prizes were so awesome. Just so many thoughts and emotions. And I still just get excited just thinking about it. (laughs) Um, But I can't believe that out of 300 people that I was among only 10 people that were chosen, not to mention the first one to be chosen. Now you might be wondering, why am I sharing this on a business podcast? And the truth is there's a lot that we can learn from this experience and a lot that I have learned from this experience when it comes to marketing my business. In the world of business, much like being on a game show, we often find ourselves in a crowd or an oversaturated market, as one might say, shouting, pick me, pick me, hire me, you know, choose my services. So here are five things that being a game show contestant taught me about marketing. Number one, have a strategic plan. Just as I invested in the trip, I chose an on-brand costume. I researched best practices to be selected always have a plan for growing your business. Because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I know we've all heard that before. Number two, set goals. My goal was clear and it was to be chosen for this game show and I achieved my goal. So in your business, set clear and smart goals to guide your path to success. And when I say SMART goals, I'm talking about the acronym for SMART, S-M-A-R-T. So your goals should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Number three, stand out by being yourself. I embraced my true jokester personality by wearing a jester costume, and I really remained authentic during the interview process. And authenticity and staying true to your brand's personality are a key to winning in marketing. I'm not telling you to go out and wear a jester costume. (laughs) I'm simply saying to stand firm in who you are and truly embrace it. Number four, take risks. This is where I learned the hard way. (laughs) While I truly try to live life with no regrets, I sometimes wish I had taken the risk and gone for the door number two. So in your business, embrace calculated risk and seize opportunities when they arise. And finally, number five, appreciate your accomplishments and the journey. In the end, I still want amazing prizes. And my husband and I had an absolute blast. And we still talk about it to this day. And we even have the episode recorded on our DVR. So remember to share your wins, no matter how big or how small, and truly savor the journey. So those are my five tips for you today, friend. And I share this fun story to really encourage you to apply these principles to your business 
marketing strategies. Because much like my game show strategy, growing your business involves a mix of preparation, setting goals, daring to stand out, taking risks, and truly appreciating the journey. If you love this story, feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram and let me know your biggest takeaways. And if you want to see the photo of me in costume standing next to Wayne Brady on the show, I will link it in the show notes for you. (laughs) I appreciate you for listening and I can't wait to chat again next week. Hey friend, thank you so much for tuning in to the Angie McPherson Show. I hope this episode ignited a fire within you, motivating you to take bold and inspired action. As a gift for listening, I've created a free download of my business toolkit featuring all the essential tools and apps I use to grow my business. Just head over to angiemcpherson.com slash toolkit to get your copy. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and leaving a rating or review wherever you're listening. And if you're feeling extra generous, sharing the podcast with a friend goes a long way. And I am truly grateful for your support. For any resources and links mentioned in today's episode, make sure to check out the show notes. Keep moving forward, friend, as each step takes you closer to your goals. I'll catch you next week for another episode.